Does old Burke work? All right, everyone, so welcome back to the Gloss Garage where we make detailing simple. My name is Saka, and today I have something special for you guys. So Old Burke is in the house. They went ahead and sent me these products right here. So go ahead and showcase and give my honest review. Some of these products, let's see if they work, let's see if they don't. So they said they're gonna send me some heavy hitters that I'm most likely going to like. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. But all in all, it's here to give my honest review and I'm gonna give you guys what I really think. So this is pretty much what they sent me is their rinse and swatch. We're gonna use a rinse and swatch. You guys know I like to use my rinse and swatch as a foam cannon, but let's see how much it emulsifies and if it gives any slickness onto the paint. Then the all-purpose soap, which is, you can have different um, dilution ratios for this. So I'm talk about it more inside the video. And also it is plant-based, so that's something that's really good. Also their tire cleaner, which is mainly for tires. The wheel cleaner, which is a two-in-one. It's an iron decon. Now the quick question, I'm not too sure. I may just spray this on the paint and see if it removes some iron, iron particles as well. But I don't have a dedicated iron remover, so I may use a DIY detail iron remover for this. But yeah, so let's see. It says wheel cleaner and iron decon. So maybe I'm able to go ahead and use this as a clay lubricant with my clay towel. I am not typically a fan of glass cleaner. I like to use rinse and swash as my glass cleaner, but we're gonna go ahead and give this a shot and give this a go. But my main two that I really going to use in this video is the medium sole polish and their medium cut pad, their yellow pad. I'm not a fan of flat pads usually. They still work great. I just prefer waffle pads in general. I have a bunch of waffle pads, uh, black, blue, green, orange, yellow from the keys. So, but I'm gonna give this a shot. Let's see how it works. Let's see how it cuts. And I'm gonna give you my honest review on that. And just because this vehicle is coming in for a one step, just for demonstration purposes, I am just going to go ahead and do a two step on the actual hood. And I'm gonna use a Supreme Cut with their microfiber pad. And then maybe I would just go ahead and finish it off with the polish as well with the red pad. But this will be for a later video. This is their rotary. So I don't have a hammered vehicle in today. So, so we'll use that for another time. And if you guys want any of these Oberg products, it'll be 10% off your purchase. If you go to Oberg.com or Oberg Car Care, I'll leave the link down below and use code DMS at checkout for 10% off. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna give you guys my honest review. If some of these products I don't like, I will tell you guys what I don't like about the products or if it just doesn't work for me in a way. So we're gonna prep this whole vehicle for ceramic coating using the Oberg product line. And then on the next video, I'll just use a panel prep from, that, from another company and the other company's ceramic coating. But we're gonna see how well we can actually prep this vehicle using the Oberg products. And let me know what you guys think about these results and let's go ahead and get started all right everyone so here is a quick walk around of the vehicle so it just started raining it's like some florida weather it wasn't even supposed to rain today it just turned cloudy rain for 10 minutes and then that was it but the wheels look pretty clean on this vehicle so what i'm gonna do is show you a different vehicle that we did later that day we did a mustang uh maki and the wheels were hammered and same thing with the tires so we're going to go ahead and display the wheel and tire uh the wheel cleaner and the tire cleaner on that you know on those set of wheels because the customer did look like he washed his vehicle probably a week ago and that's about it really so other than that yeah so in terms of the paint the only damage that we really had on the paint which is hard to see here on this part but when we do the polishing step you will see it is on that rear spoiler just because it has water on it at the moment but you see it, it's a little bit oxidized from from here maybe i you know it was, it was hard to see there but um yeah so pretty much that's what really the most damage was at the rest of the paint looked immaculate except that carvana sticker that's on the back i tried to remove it as well for the customer but it just didn't remove but in terms of the paint it's just oxidized all the little orange specks here and there nothing too crazy at the moment 
just like i said just the spoiler part was just really the only downside of the entire vehicle that was just pretty much just super hammered and oxidized now as we move on to the wheel cleaning we're gonna go ahead and showcase their old burke wheel cleaner which is actually i really enjoy this wheel cleaner and i will be purchasing it again it clings it clings well it's not super thick like the g technic you know fallout remover it just clings well and it just really does the job what it's needed to do now the only downside that i just didn't like in general was just the tire cleaner i prefer things that foam up usually you know i use uh for any type i i clean my wheels i use a foamer to go ahead and foam it onto the wheels and tires and that's about it if i could get something that foams because i don't like you know spraying constantly especially if you're doing multiple vehicles and just uh, constantly spraying on the trigger especially for wheel cleaning purposes but all in all it just took the browning off the tires look at the wheels as well all that purpling all that iron is just coming off and it just did a fantastic job all in all to go ahead and take care of this hammered tires and wheels that's just you know it's just a construction vehicle so it just did well and just a complete before and after is yeah so the only downside is just the tire cleaner in itself of me just constantly spraying and but the wheel cleaner in itself i will definitely be purchasing again all right so let's go ahead and dilute this rinseless wash so it's standard 256 to 1 this rinseless wash reminds me of like the old school like um, medicine for when you had strep throat as a kid that you know amoxicillin and this is what it literally smells like just don't drink it, it smells really good it's standard dilution 256 to 1 I have one gallon in here so it's half an ounce per gallon one cap full is half an ounce I'm gonna go ahead and put one whole cap full in there and let's see how it works. Uh, is this a surfactant base? I'm not too sure. I think it's po polymer base, but it says 256 to one as a rinse and wash, quick detailer, two ounces per gallon as a quick detailer and lubricant. Um, if you just add a little more, maybe it'll be a little bit more slick. So what we're gonna do is just add just one more. We're gonna add one more half an ounce just because I am gonna use this kind of as a clay lube at the same time so i want it to be super slick and yeah so i'm gonna pump this up and then we'll see you in a bit all right so let's go ahead and talk about their all-purpose soap so pretty much this attacks salt and calcium deposits it is plant-based and it's perfect for mobile washing so it says for a foam cannon it's two ounces to a foam cannon that's full there's about 50 ounces i'm not using a foam cannon but i'm going to use a foamer to go ahead and apply it onto the paint and it says apply two ounces but since this is 50 ounces usually a foamer has 32 ounces but we're going to apply three ounces to this to 50 ounces and in terms of smell it doesn't really smell too good it kind of smells like fish yo doug come over here i'm being serious i don't really smell too much but does it smell like a little bit like fish yeah, it's a fishy kind of smell. It's a fishy smell. It's that fishy smell. So, yeah, it smells a little bit like fish. So, mm, 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 mm. So, we're going to apply three ounces. So, one, our capful is about half an ounce. So, we're going to put six capfuls. So this is four, five, and six. Yeah. It has a fishy smell. So, if you like salmon or fish, this is for you. Um, so, but let's see how well it cleans. Unfortunately, I'm not really a big fan of the actual smell. And the last thing about this direction is use half an ounce per gallon for a traditional bucket wash. So I do have three ounces of water, uh, three gallons of water. So I'm going to use three capfuls of this and see how well it is. So I'm going to put this off camera. And yeah, I just don't really like the fish smell, but. I'm going to move you guys over once we're ready to foam. APS it says to use it in a shaded area. It's overcast day. It's not hot outside. It's about 75 degrees. And the panel is cool to the touch. So if you're working on a black vehicle, 75 degree weather, yes, of course you want to do this. But it says for the best experience, it doesn't mean it doesn't work in direct sunlight. 
but let's go ahead and foam this up and it's foaming up nice look I'm gonna foam it on the glass and that's because I tilted this over but this is mainly like an all-purpose degreasing type of soap that we're using to prep the vehicle and I filled it up almost all the way to the top so let me get more suds and apply this on the paint I mean on the windshield in terms of that fishy smell it's still slightly there I'm not really a fan of this smell but this is to go ahead and deep clean the pores of the paint like it says for salt deposit maybe it has some water spot mineral remover in there as well but I'm gonna use a different water spot remover just as insurance but all in all it's as simple as that and I'm gonna finish spraying this and then I'll be I'll see you guys in about 20 seconds all right, so we let it dwell here for about like 30 seconds or so, 45 seconds. And it's actually breaking down the dirt pretty good, as you see on the paint. But like they said, for best experience, we don't really want to be in direct sunlight. So we're just going to go ahead and iron that. And I'm going to start rinsing this off, the actual paint. And then we're going to apply the rinseless wash on top of it. Because as you know, I like to use a rinseless wash as my snow foam per se but this is pretty much as a snow foam in the same time it's just I'm rinsing off 90% of the dirt I'm using a garden hose it rinses off really clean really easy nothing that I'm worried about and flip this hose over all in all it cleans really well even on the hood Will I use this soap every day? I'm going to be honest, nah. All right, so let's go ahead and do the, all right, let's go ahead and start spraying the rinseless wash. So this is old Burke, it's pink. And in terms of smell, you barely smell it outside. I mean, I am sick, so maybe my cousin smells it, but. We'll see how lubricate, lubricated it is, how much lubrication it gives. Just because I did put a little more, I put one whole ounce to a gallon because I, I will be using this almost as a clay lube as well with the clay towel. And I think this is a polymer base, I'm not too sure. So if anybody from Obert, and I'm starting to smell the um, Rinseless now, so yeah, it smells good even when it's diluted. So this is a really enjoyable product. Now in terms of cleaning capabilities or slickness, I'm gonna give you guys my verdict. I do love rinseless washes. I have like six different rinseless washes. Spray this onto the panel. And then we're gonna go ahead, grab the hose. And we're gonna foam up the APS soap that's in here. And let's see how much suds it provides. It's not super sudsy, but you still get some suds as you can see. So it's not the foamiest type of soap, but it's still pretty foamy. Now it's time to wash from top to bottom. So Doug, you could grab the other side. And let me know how, it actually feels pretty slick. Maybe the rinse this wash or maybe it's the soap that's slick. Right, the paint feels slick, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. So, so it does feel slick under the towel. Now in terms of it's, if it's the soap or the rinses, I'm not sure. I will be doing a rinses wash battle in its own up to the decontamination stage. So we're gonna, this says it's an iron decon as well, this wheel cleaner. So I'm gonna see if I could use this on the paint. And yeah, let's give this a shot. If not, it clings onto the paint. 
cling it clings on really well see if we get little iron deposits we cleaned the panel we cleaned everything and i'm going to use the aps uh all-purpose soap as the lubrication for this so i have this already in my clean bucket and it's actually reacting onto the paint you see some iron deposits starting to bleed onto the paint so we're going to let that cling on there for a little bit and let's see if we can actually use this clay towel to go ahead and clay as well because not all iron removers are meant to be used with any type of clay media but let me bring you in closer to the paint so you can see the iron deposits being brought down before we do the water spot remover but you can see the bleeding that's happening and i think i think the best form of practice is let me just do this on the back end where most of the iron deposit is really going to go ahead and be pronounced so i'm gonna spray this on the back area and i'm just gonna spray it as such clings on really well this is where you'll get most of the iron deposits but while this is sitting and concentrating, we're gonna go ahead and see if we could use a clay towel as a, with the iron mover and see if it, there's lubrication or whatnot, or if we gotta resort to something else. So it is clean off. There's lubrication on here. I'm not really too worried about it. And it's no pressure, just clay back and forth. It does have a little bit of a sandpaper feel, but it comes off easily. And I like to do this step. I know I, I said I was gonna use the rinseless wash, but you could definitely tell that the rinseless wash really did have a lot of lubrication because it's not as slick. It's not as slick as it was when I applied the rinseless wash and then this than the APS so it's definitely it's not as slick as when I had the rinse wash but it's still slick and now the paint feels smooth now let's go to the back and see how much iron was being removed and look at all that bleeding right there all the can you use this on paint Yes, you can. Do I recommend it? I'm not too sure. Maybe if old Burke, you can leave a comment down below. But it is pulling that iron off. Great, so we're gonna go ahead and clay the rest of the vehicle using this method. And yeah, so I'll, we'll see you guys when we're up to the polishing step. So before I get started with this polishing, as you see, I'm just opening up the polishing pads and I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the B pillar over here but I did use a water spot remover just to go ahead and remove those minerals. I did that off camera because I don't have a water spot remover for, you know, from Old Burke. But yeah, so pretty much I just wanted to clear things up. And so I go ahead and use sole. And at first it just, you know, it's just the A pillar, B pillar. These areas tend to be very soft paint. And we go ahead on this piano black or gloss black type of trim. And I go ahead and do a two section pass on the actual paint which is pretty much simple and easy to do it just ends up leaving a hazy finish which it did end up leaving a hazy finish and then I go ahead and use the polish as the second step to go ahead and clear up that ghosting effect that was left behind as you can see even from here from this far away it looks you know just a bit hazy just because it was just a bit too aggressive so so is pad dependent and I was really enjoying this polishing pad or not the polishing pad the actual sole polish just because of the simple fact that it is pad dependent and it is a medium cut even if you use it on a foam pad and if you use it on a wool pad it cuts even more and it just finishes down nicely but here i am using the oldberg polish to go ahead and just finish it off and just give that piano black just a nice overall finish and i was just a little careful on the actual plastic trim it didn't stain the plastic trim but it just left a little residue that i went ahead and used panel prep afterwards to go ahead and remove and i did quick three section passes and it just left the perfect now finish. this polish does have like that tint or hue so hopefully it doesn't stain the actual towels but all in all, let's see 
how it came out and wow that is practically perfect and in person it literally looks perfect the camera is going to pick up a little more but it's literally perfect wow let me walk you over to the other side as you can see all these swirls and scratches compared to the other side that's crazy so as for the spoiler this was the most damaged area and you could just tell right here when you just saw the quick clip and even once I, i'm done polishing this other half it it's just pretty much way too far gone it looks like the oxidation already ate through the clear and it's, it's just gone and that's even oxidation off the pad itself and it's just it's just crazy we still revived it as much as we could and we used the three-part system so we used the supreme cut then we went ahead and used the um the regular polish or sole just to go ahead and remove that extra layer of oxidation because it was still baked on there and then we went ahead and just finished it off with the red foam pad with the polish that way we could give it that ultra gloss and shine as much as we can and it, like i said this is just already too far gone we're just going ahead and just reviving as much as we can but that's all in all pretty much it and you just see a complete 50 50 on the actual spoiler on how it looks and i just bring you guys in and that's all the best we could really do to that um spoiler now on the roof i go ahead and use the actual supreme cut and the two you know just the two-part system just to show i didn't want to do it on the hood because it's just such a bigger section to do more be more passes compared to the roof that only had this part of just paint really and i ended up doing four section passes with the microfiber pad and it just cut through those little water spots and oxidation with ease and just with two suction passes with the actual polish and the red foam pad it just did it even better and it just left like a super glossy perfect finish on the roof and there was nothing to complain about the wipe off was easy it didn't you know dust the compound i did three section or uh, four section passes and it just didn't dust it did get a bit you know jumpy and grabby but it just didn't dust whatsoever yet so here i am using the foam pad which i really enjoyed a lot especially this red foam pad and it just is so malleable and just goes through corners easily and here i did three section passes just to go ahead and just fully just jewel up the paint and then just buff off and here's a complete 50 50 just a night and day difference from the top and the bottom half so yeah so once i did that i just went ahead and just started polishing the rest of the paint but one thing I did realize, and I talk about this at the end of the video, and I think I just have a clip here of me just pretty much saying this is what I'm going to be using. is just the wool pad from DIY Detail. I just polish away, and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, skip to that clip because it's just valuable information. And then from here, I'm just fast forwarding the rest of me polishing the rest of the vehicle. All right, everyone, so quick update. So this is how the paint looks. And this we used, we paired it with the DIY Detail wool pad because the wool tends to cut a little more but leaves a better finish, in my opinion, on a DA. So let's just take a look at the comparison. This side I use uh, Soul. For these two panels, I use Soul from Oberg. It's just that, um, this side I use the DIY Detail wool pad and over here I use a microfiber. The microfiber is a bit too aggressive and leaves a hazy finish. And yeah, so let's take a look. So follow the light and just look at the difference. It, and the wool pad left a glossier finish. And now we're here where we left with the microfiber. Does it mean the microfiber is bad? Absolutely not. Look what the polish did, right? Sole is literally pad dependent. So, Look at the correction. And this just means that you do not need to use their system, but their polish is just great. And just go back to the side with the microfiber. You see that little hazy type of finish. And then you come over here, nice and clear. And then over here is where we haven't done anything. And just look at the difference from this panel to here. And this is just a one step. So my cousin ended up switching his pad and we started using the wool pad from DIY Detail. And this, this in turn just means that just use or every paint is different. So you may need to use different pad and polishes type of combination. And 
sometimes when you buy one system that doesn't mean that just because they have certain amount of pads does not mean that it just doesn't work you just need to get a different pad a different amount of polish prime it just all depends on what it is a lot of people tend to buy 15 different polishes because they feel that it doesn't work but in reality the polish isn't the problem you just need to pair it up correctly with any pad and we found the best combination was with this DIY detail wool pad Oberg sole and this paint literally looks flawless it's just absolutely insane it's as if we use supreme cut and the polish that's just insane so yeah that's just my verdict here so and this was just four section passes and the microfiber did an amazing job this area was fully 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 swirled up like crazy but it just left a hazy finish so we're just going to go ahead and use sole with the wool with the wool pad from diy detail and the system works amazing. If I'm going to do a two-step, I'll use Supreme Cut with the microfiber. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and finish it off with the polish. But it's not needed. Sole is pad-dependent. It's a great one-step. And this is exactly what we're going for. It's just the polish and the pad combination when you're doing a one-step. So, yeah. So, it's great. So, see you in a bit. So hopefully you guys found that clip just educational and just my verdict on, you know, just the polish and pad. Sometimes it's just not the polish, it's you just need a different pad, different technique and always cut cool, right? That's main the main purpose and that's why I felt like the DIY detail worked better or with the wool pad just because a wool pad cuts a lot cooler than a microfiber and it doesn't leave it's uh, the microfiber in my opinion is just too aggressive and it leaves more of its own defects behind compared to a wool on a DA. So here are the results it just looks phenomenal it just looks super glossy super shiny and this is what the paint looks like afterwards it just looks just phenomenal and this was just with soul so Oberg did a spectacular job with soul soul is great supreme is great same thing with their polish but I really in turn really use one steps and that's mainly my main business is just a one step and go ahead and coat right over it because usually i really work on daily drivers and overall just did a spectacular job and you see the gloss you see the finish and yeah so right before we get to the outro with my final thoughts hopefully you guys enjoy this video hopefully you guys enjoy that little informational clip and just enjoy the results of this walk around before we get to the outro and talk piece by piece of what i i would purchase and what you know just didn't really work for me all right everyone so this is the end of the video so does oberk work and the simple answer is yes it works great and yeah so it, you saw the result on the paint you know prep before we went ahead and coated the vehicle it worked great there's nothing bad to say about old burke now i'm not gonna say there's nothing bad but i got things in order of what i won't buy again what i will buy depending on my business and what i will for sure keep buying from them this is just on the test part only because i haven't used it as a dedicated rinseless but as a glass cleaner it worked it worked great it cleaned the glass super well but yeah so let's talk about first let's talk about the two negatives and then we'll go ahead on the things that i will purchase again so these foam pads i will purchase again if i need foam pads now in terms of microfiber i'm not really a huge fan of microfiber it did the job it left a little bit of a hazy finish but if you really want that aggressive cut with the supreme cut is color corded uh, coordinated you will get the cut that's needed but even if you use it with sole then from there you're leaving little ticks behind with microfiber that's just the only downside so i wouldn't really be purchasing purchasing this again i like to use wool more to cut just because it leaves a better finish in my opinion and just maybe it's just my technique so but all in all it works great i'm, I'm not gonna say anything it's just i wouldn't purchase this again for, for my thing now glass cleaner i i use it to clean one glass i'm not really a big huge fan of glass cleaners um it worked great i used it on 
on the on the front windshield it worked phenomenal there's nothing bad with it i just prefer rinse and wash where i said this rinse and wash worked great as a glass cleaner and you know i just loved it in terms of the smell it just smells like you know just straight up it just smells like what's that smell it's just always in the back of my head but it doesn't smell like alcohol or or anything like other glass cleaners it's just it's just some tropical type of smell and yeah so that's what it smells like but it's nothing bad to say about this glass cleaner it's just i'm not a glass cleaner type of guy and again honesty is my policy when i'm doing these type of reviews now all-purpose soap the only negative thing is you can't use this in direct sunlight if it's hot so if you're a mobile detailer just be careful with this it's super strong um also for the actual smell i don't like the smell it smells like fish a little bit i don't know why is uh, that's just me that's what i'm getting at my cousin as well i had to bring my cousin over and say hey what the smell it smells like fish right he was like yeah it does um it does it does what it's supposed to do it cleans well you saw when i foamed it on when i used it two ounces it brung down that dirt you saw it on the white paint on how it's bringing down that dirt and then also in the bucket now when you put it in the bucket it doesn't smell like fish it just really smells more when you do two ounces to the actual 32 ounce but in terms of the smell i just i just don't like it um so i wouldn't be purchasing this again i will use this up for sure because it works it works great but in terms of the smell i just don't like the smell so that these are just the three that i just wouldn't be purchasing again but if you're into glass cleaners they work great if you're into this there's nothing bad to say about it just but you know just be just use it in the shade and you know and just the smell but that's just about it now these in the middle is what i say it's more depending on because this old Burke supreme cut is probably going to last me a lifetime i have a heavy cut compound which is the last cut and that's another thing that i put in i enjoy that compound is just that they last me for a long time because I don't really do two steps too much in my business. I'm more of the one step and then coat. But if it comes in, again, I, me as a business, if you're going to buy a, if you got already have a heavy cut compound and you know you don't use a heavy cut every single time, then you don't really need to purchase this. But if you don't have one and you're willing to purchase, this, this is actually a really good heavy cut compound it just it's very low dusting or pretty much no dusting because i did four suction passes with the microfiber and you saw on how there was no dusting whatsoever now you can't use this in direct sunlight with the last cut you could use it in direct sunlight or op compound you could use it in direct sunlight but that's just the only downside about this is is not really sunlight friendly and there's no smell if you're into smells you know i don't really care it's just you know there's it just smells like any regular polish but it does the job great so this is why it's in the middle it's just because i typically just do one steps now for the polish it's the same thing how often am i really polishing to perfection on a paint not often and then usually polishes they tend to be too soft to do any type of aggression so i like to use a either op compound or op or diy detail gold standard just because they give a little more cut and it's pad dependent compared to this this is slightly pad dependent you could say but it's not really it's really meant to jewel the paint so so yeah so this is why it's in the middle because th these two will last forever for me because like i said if you're if you're in a business doing a bunch of paint correction they work phenomenal um in terms of careful with the plastic trim just in case and anybody know burke if you could leave it down below in the comment section does it stain plastic trim i just didn't want to take a chance so i did it on areas where there was no plastic trim and yeah now tire cleaner is in the middle just because it cleans well it cleaned the tire rubbers really well but the only thing is that i just can't be doing this all day I can't. It's just it, it, it's annoying. 
you know, using the trigger. Can I use this on a foam spray? I like things that foam. Um, and that's it, really. I just like things that foam on the tires and wheels. Um, if anybody in Oberg can let me know if this foams, then maybe I'll buy a gallon of this because it really cleans the rubbers really well, as you saw on the Mustang. Now, these are what I will purchase again if need be. I have way too many polishing pads, but you know, in terms of polishing pads, these, I have nothing bad to say. These, this polishing pad is great. And this is a great soft jewel, jeweling pad as well. I, I love this pad. And you guys saw it when I did the two part on the actual, um, I think I did a, a, a three step on just the B pillar, just to show a quick demonstration of it. And the polishing system did amazing. This is why I put this in the middle that I will purchase again, just it will last me forever. So probably the next time I will purchase it is probably in a whole nother year and a half or two. Um, but these I would definitely purchase again if I was you guys. Now, the, this one I would definitely purchase again. This stinks, but it's just normal because it's iron decline as well. It's a two-in-one wheel cleaner. You saw how it did on that Mustang. It clings on really well. It brings down the dirt and the purpling effect or the bleeding effect of dissolving the iron. And I use this on two vehicles today. And this is how much I use it. And I even use it on the paint on, on the Stinger. And I have half left, so it lasts a pretty, pretty uh, good while. So this I will definitely purchase again. Rinse and swash, like I said, I got to do a test on this. Will it be on my top five? I'm not too sure. We'll go ahead and give it a shot against other rinse and swashes. It did well as a glass cleaner, and it did well when I sprayed it on to pre-treat the panel, and then I used it with the all-purpose soap, and it was super slick. And I could tell 110% the slickness was because of this. Even when I also used it on, as a damp rinseless towel to go ahead and remove the sole, it literally emulsified that polish and that polish residue, and then easily wiped off the paint. It's it, it, super slick. Now, in terms of cleaning properties, I really got to use it on a dirty car and see how much it really emulsifies or not. And anybody know Burke, just let me know whether this is a polymer base or, or surfactant base type of rinse and swash. And yeah, now the flagship, I think this is the soul of Oberk. Literally, this is, this was great. Now, only question I have, Oberg, is does it stain plastic trim? Because when I went over the plastic trip, it did leave a little white residue on it, but then I cleaned it off and it was gone. So, you know, it's not like, you know, the DIY detail gold standard or the OP compound where it actually cleans the trim. It did clean the trim, I could say, but I'm, I, I was just very careful going over the edges anyways on the black plastic trim. So anybody just let me know. Now, in terms of it being pad dependent, I loved it. It has about four to five um, section passes before it starts getting a little bit grabby. And this is in a garage setting. And I ended up using it with the DIY detail wool pad. Now, this is what I mean of why I like products like these and even the Supreme Cut and Polish is because if you already have pads, this is just part of their system. But if you already have pads, you could go ahead and just use whatever pads you guys have and just, depends on what the paint wants and the fact that this is a one step we made this look as if we almost did a two step on the paint with just this sole polish and this wool pad it just came out phenomenal now if you're into smell it just smells like any regular polish you know i don't really care for smell I, you know if i'm comparing two products then yeah of course you want to compare the smell but it just worked amazing now the work time, like I said, it's just about four section passes before it started getting grabby on me. And that's just about it compared to, you know, other polishes on the market. Um, you know, like the gold standard or OP compound, they have such a long work time that you can even polish this in direct sunlight. Here it says do not use this in direct sunlight. So use it in a shaded area and you will have no problem. I did this inside my garage and the results are just phenomenal. And I got nothing bad to say about this. This I will purchase this again because at the end of the day, um, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have my own garage. I'm gonna do everything on the inside of the garage and I'll be happy to go ahead and use this again for sure. I'm, I'm gonna be using this often. So 
yeah, that's about it really guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's about it. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be doing more reviews on this. Now, if you guys want any 10% off any Oberk, you know, product, use code DMS at checkout in all caps for 10% off. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this in-depth review. I know it was a bit long, but I really wanted to put these things to the test and just show the capabilities of this products and what it can do. Now, you know, not every product is for somebody. So yeah, so, but these products work phenomenal. Like from here to here, I mean, they all work great. Now it's just in terms of just what I prefer is this is what I truly prefer. Like I would buy again right away. And this is what I would just, you know, it will last me a long time. So this is why I'm not really too crazy to go ahead and get it. And just, just these two, just because of my personal preference, they work, but they're just not for me. So that's about it guys. So hopefully you guys enjoy this type of content and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.